From the Druid side, we're going with Circle of Moon, and we're tapping into powerful wild shapes to buff ourselves in combat with extra HP and stronger attacks. Plus, Druids bring a suite of support spells that can keep both us and our friends in the fight. On the Bard side, we're going to go with Sword Bard. We're all about that blade flourish for more combat options and improved movement speed. And here's the best part. Sword Bard gives us an extra attack, even while wild shaped. Combine that with Bard's fantastic support spells, and we've got a character that's incredibly effective both in and out of combat. I'll be going over each level step by step using D&D Beyond's character build. For our race, we're going with Custom Lineage. This gives us an incredible flexibility and powerful suite of perks. A plus two to any ability score, a feat, dark vision, or a skill proficiency. Plus, it offers us a lot of freedom for roleplay. Want to lean into your primal side and be a beast man? Go for it. Or come up with your own unique race. Just check with your DM to see what's allowed. When it comes to creature type, we are humanoid. And as for size, you can go with medium or small. This is mostly up to you since both have the pros and cons, but I'm going to go with small for their advantage of being able to hide behind cover more easily. Plus the idea of a tiny character transforming into a large beast I find pretty hilarious. Custom Lineage grants us a feat and we're taking Telepathic. If you've ever played a Moon Druid, you know one of the biggest drawbacks is not being able to communicate while wild shaped. Telepathic lets us talk to our friends even in wild shape so we can still play in fights or solve puzzles without dropping our form. Telepathic also gives us the ability to cast Detect Thoughts for free which adds some nice utility, plus we get a plus one to Wisdom, Intelligence, or Charisma. Since we're mainly going to be a Bard, I'm going to take the Charisma Boost. For the Variable Trait, we're choosing Dark Vision for its functionality when we're not Wild Shaped. As a Bard, we already have plenty of skill proficiencies, so this is a great complement to our build. For Ability Scores, I prefer using Point Buy to create balanced stats for my builds. Here's how we're shaping up our Party Animal. Strength, I'm going to leave it 8. We don't need much strength for combat since our wild shapes can provide some impressive strength scores when necessary. Dexterity, I'm going to set to 14. This will max out our armor class while wearing medium armor and give us solid attack capabilities as a sword bard when not wild shaped. Constitution, I'm going to set to 12. We won't need a ton of health because we'll get extra hit points from our wild shapes. Intelligence, I'm going to leave as 8 as our dump stat. For roleplay, I think it kind of makes sense that a character who parties hard might not be the most intelligent, often overlooking the morning headaches. Wisdom, I'm going to set to 14. We only need a 13 of multi-class and a druid, but a 14 will boost our spell DC for druid spells and improve our wisdom saves. Charisma, I'm going to boost up to 15. This is our main stat for bard spells, charisma skill checks, and saving throws. With our telepathic feat and the custom lineage giving us a plus 2, this jumps up to an impressive 18 at level 1. At level 1, we're kicking off with Bard, setting the stage for our party animal build. This choice gives us a large range of cool perks, several skill and instrument proficiencies, light armor, simple weapons, and a handful of specific martial weapons that will come in handy when we're not wild shaped. For instrument proficiencies, let's get creative. Since we're embracing our inner animal, we'll choose instruments that a critter might realistically play. Drums and percussion are a natural fit, so we'll go with the hand drum and war gong. I'm also picking up the pan flute. Imagine it as an oversized harmonica strapped like a one-man band setup. Feel free to get inventive. If you or your DM are wondering about animals playing instruments, just check out circus videos. Bears playing instruments are a real thing. Plus, our animal forms use our intelligence and instrument proficiencies for skills, we're taking Perception. This is because our Wisdom score is decent, and some animal forms will give us advantage with Sight, Hearing, and Smell checks, an often overlooked feature that Wild Shape brings. Persuasion is our second choice. Our High Charisma and Bardic Flair will make us the charming face of the party. And then lastly, I'm going to choose Animal Handling. I think this goes along well with the theme of the build. We'll also get spell casting and Bardic Inspiration right off the bat. Remember, Bardic Inspiration just requires that allies can hear you. So even in Wild Shape, you can still use an intimidating growl or a bang of a drum to inspire your friends. When it comes to our spells, remember that while Wild Shaped, we cannot cast directly, but we can maintain concentration. So we'll focus on utility spells for out-of-combat scenarios and long-lasting concentration spells. 
Later, spells like Heat Metal, which activate as a bonus action, will work perfectly with Wild Shape, since activating doesn't count as casting. For our level 1 cantrips, we're picking Mage Hand. Beyond its usual uses, Mage Hand pairs exceptionally well with Wild Shape, transforming into something tiny like a frog or spider, and let the Mage Hand help you fly for a minute. If your DM interprets Mage Hand as an interaction only with objects, simply carry a small basket or a piece of wood as a floating platform. This way you can bypass tricky gaps or risky climbs. We're also going to take Prestidigitation. This way you can add a touch of magic to your parties. Imagine chilling warm ale or performing a mini magic show to dazzle your guests. For our level 1 spells, we are going to start with Fairy Fire. This is a fantastic concentration spell that lights up enemies, making them easier to hit. Healing Word. This way we have a backup go-to spell for quick healing to get down party members back on their feet. Can't use this with Wild Shape, but if it's an emergency, you do have access to it. Also take Heroism. This is an excellent choice for bolstering frontliners or yourself, and when you do get Wild Shape, this will help keep you in Wild Shape and in the fight. Finally, we're going to go with Long Strider. It's a perfect fit, extending our movement speed to complement the hour-long duration of Wild Shape and the speed boost from Blade Flourish at Bard level 3. Let's dive into our character sheet and see what we've got. We're rocking spellcasting with a solid 14 save DC and two first level spell slots ready to go. For our gear, we've got our trusty light crossbow and a dagger. With our decent dexterity, we're looking at a plus 4 to hit and plus 2 to damage. And don't forget that we do have Bardic Inspiration and a 13 AC while wearing our leather armor. At level 2, we're going to pick up our first level in Druid. I think this is the best strategy early on since Wild Shape can be very powerful at lower levels. Even more so with our subclass, Moondroid, at level 2. So first thing we get are some new proficiencies, medium armor and shields. Keep in mind that there's a sage advice that druids wearing only non-metal armor is more of a flavor choice and taboo to some druids. So talk to your DM on whether or not they will enforce that so you can eventually get half plate over something like hide armor. We also get druidic that could come in handy in certain situations. And of course we get druid spellcasting. For our level 1 druid spells, we're going to start with Guidance. This is a fantastic spell for boosting those tricky skill checks, and it stacks with Bardic Inspiration. Next, we're going to go with Druid Craft. Completing our repertoire of ultimate party animal spells. This way we can dazzle our guests with a display of nature magic. For level 1 spells, we're going to start with Detect Magic. A must-have for any adventuring group, and druids can cast this ritually. Then we're going to take Good Berry, a classic druid spell that gives you access to 10 berries that restore one hit point each. And if you do have some spells left over at the end of the day, use your spell slots wisely and cast this so you have a stash of them for the next day. And then the last spell at level 1 is going to be Protection from Good and Evil. This will give us a nice defensive spell to use in specific situations to help shield us or our friends in the front line. At level 3, we're leveling up our druid abilities with a second level in druid. First up, we gain the animal companion feature, perfect for summoning a trusty familiar to assist in and out of combat. Then we unlock the wild shape feature, giving us the power to transform into a beast at this point twice per day. But the real highlight is our subclass. For this, we're going with Circle of the Moon. With Combat Wild Shape, we can use Wild Shape as a bonus action. This means you can cast a spell before transforming or transform and attack all in the same turn. Plus, with the Circle Form feature, we now Wild Shape into a beast with a CR of 1 or lower. While this doesn't increase until level 6, our shapes are still as robust as a level 5 Moon Druids. Remember, you can only wild shape into beasts you've seen before, so make sure to chat with your DM. Ensure they include several CR1 beasts in your campaign, or provide some starter or homebrew options to expand your wild shape repertoire. At level 3, we gain access to one more druid spell. I'm choosing Absorb Elements. 
This is a fantastic defensive spell that will give us a crucial edge when we don't have the extra HP from Wild Shape. While it can't be used in Wild Shape, it'll help us absorb elemental damage and even boost our damage output when we start swinging with our Sword Bard abilities. And here's the best part, because we're multi-classing into two full casters, we get the full spell slot progression. That means we now have four level 1 spell slots and two level 2 slots at our disposal. From here on out, we're diving into the bard side of our build. At level 4, we're going to add our second level of bard. And things are about to get even more exciting. First, we gain Magical Inspiration, which amps up the magical damage and healing for anyone we inspire. Your bardic support just got a serious upgrade. Next up, we got Jack of All Trades. This nifty feature adds half of your proficiency bonus to any ability check, including initiative. That means we'll be quick off the mark and ready to lead our party into action. Finally, we unlock Song of Rest. At Bard level 2, this powerful ability grants extra healing to everyone during a short rest, making our recovery between battles even smoother. Now we're picking up one more Bard spell, and I'm going to go with Featherfall. This spell is your ultimate safety net, perfect for those moments when you or a friend might need a quick rescue from falling damage. Plus, we're also getting our third level 2 spell slot, giving us even more magic at our disposal. At level 5, we're hitting a major milestone with our third level in Bard. First up, we gain Expertise, doubling our proficiency in two key skills. I'm going to go with Persuasion to enhance our role as the party's charismatic face, and Perception to boost our awareness, especially useful for those wild shapes that offer impressive sensory abilities. Now we're going to pick up the College of Swords. First thing that we get are some bonus proficiencies, and we've already got medium armor from the Druid side, but we'll also gain proficiency with Scimitars. The best thing here is that we can now use our weapon as a spell casting focus. And next up, we get our fighting style feature, and we're going to go with Dueling. This choice gives us a solid boost to our melee damage when we're not in wild shape. And while dual wielding scimitars is an option, it's not the best move for us right now. Our HP isn't stellar out of wild shape, so we want to be wearing a shield. And it would also clutter up our bonus action. Here's where things get really exciting. The Blade Flourish feature from the College of Swords. This is an amazing ability. It, it is always active and even works while you're wild shape. So when you take the attack action, you gain an extra 10 feet of movement, regardless of whether you hit your target or not. If you do hit, you can spend a Bardic Inspiration die to activate one of these incredible flourishes. Defensive Flourish, add an extra damage and boost your armor class by the number rolled on the Inspiration die. Slashing Flourish, cleave into a second target, dealing additional damage to that target equal to the roll on your Inspiration die, as well as the original target. And Mobile Flourish. Add damage and push your target back 5 feet, plus the roll on your Inspiration die. You can then use your reaction to move up to your walking speed to a space within 5 feet of your target. Remember, the Blade Flourish feature can be used with Wild Shape when you take the attack action with natural weapon attacks. However, it doesn't work with a beast's multi-attack, so use this feature strategically to maximize your impact. By now, we've built a character with a solid melee attack, bonus damage, and some great defensive spells. With half blade armor or better, we're pretty sturdy in close combat, even outside of wild shape. I'd recommend picking up a rapier as it's going to be the best one-handed weapon you can get. But here's the beauty of this build. If the hits start coming in and you're getting low on health, you can effortlessly shift gears and operate as a ranged character. This versatility ensures you're always effective no matter the situation. At level 3 bard, we unlock our first second level spells, and it's time to take things up a notch. First on the list is Heat Metal. This spell is a powerhouse, especially when we're in wild shape. Cast it before transforming, and then keep the heat on as a bonus action while in your beast form. I'm also going to swap out Heroism. And we're going to take Enhanced Ability. This is a versatile spell. It is fantastic both in and out of combat, and it lasts an hour, making it a great fit for wild shape. In battle, Bull Strength gives advantage on grapple checks, perfect for beasts that don't normally grapple, while Bear's Endurance provides temporary hit points for extra durability. Outside of combat, this spell can give you a major boost on skill checks by granting advantage. And, as we hit level 5, we're also gaining two level 3 spell slots, expanding our magical arsenal even further. At level 6, we're adding our 4th level in Bard. 
First, we gain Bardic Versatility, which lets us swap out a skill, expertise, or a Bard cantrip whenever we get an ability score improvement. While we won't use this feature right now, it's great to have the flexibility to adapt to your campaign's needs. Next, we get our first ability score improvement. While feats are tempting, there aren't many that significantly boost Wild Shape. Instead, we're going to pump up our Charisma to 20. This raises our spell save DC to 16 and makes our charisma based skill checks and saves even more impressive. At level 6, we gain a new Bard Cantrip, and since we're focused on melee, Thunderclap is a fantastic pick. This spell lets us deal damage to multiple enemies at once, sometimes even outshining extra attack in certain situations. We also get another second level spell, and for this, my pick is Aid. This spell is a versatile gem, providing both defensive and healing benefits for the party. Plus, it's an excellent choice for upcasting, giving us even more bang for our buck. At level 5 Bard, we unlock Font of Inspiration, allowing us to use our Bardic Inspiration much more liberally. This pairs perfectly with Wild Shape as both recharge on a short rest, so we'll definitely be looking to take advantage of those short rests as often as possible. Now, at Bard level 5, we unlock the power of 3rd level spells. I'm going to add... Hypnotic Pattern, a fantastic spell for taking multiple enemies out of the fight temporarily. And then I'm also going to swap out Enhanced Ability and pick up Motivational Speech. This spell boosts our team's defenses with temporary hit points, grants us advantage on wisdom saving throws, and even gives advantage on attacks if those temporary hit points are still active when you get hit. It's the perfect morale boost that aligns perfectly with the party animal theme. And at level seven, we get our first fourth level spell slot, giving us the ability to upcast spells with even more power. At level eight, we're gonna take our sixth level in Bard. This is gonna give us the Counter Charm feature, which helps protect us and our allies from being frightened or charmed. The best part, we can use this while wild shaped, as long as our friends can hear us. The highlight of this level is, of course, extra attack. Outside wild shape, this boosts our average damage per round significantly. In wild shape, it's a game changer, especially for beasts without multi-attack, allowing us to take the most of their single attacks that tend to hit pretty hard. At level 8, we gain another spell, and I'm going to choose Bestow Curse. Since we're not shy about getting up close and personal with our enemies, this spell is perfect for us. Bestow Curse offers multiple options, providing great versatility. I suggest using it on powerful enemies, like bosses, and opting for the feature that might force them to waste their action. This can turn a tough boss fight into a walk in the park. Additionally, we get a second 4th level spell slot, giving us even more magical firepower. Now, at level 8, we still have our 16 spell save DC and spell slots all the way up to level 4, as well as a mix of utility spells and concentration spells that can work with wild shape. We've equipped better armor and a rapier and a shield to help us out in melee combat when not using wild shape. When it comes to choosing your wild shape forms, the options are brimming with possibilities. Here are a few of my top picks. First up, the brown bear. A classic choice, the brown bear is a powerhouse with its multi-attacks and solid defense stats. With the sword bard's extra attack, you can unleash two claw attacks, making for some impressive damage output. Plus, the bear's advantage on perception checks to smell, combined with our high perception, is a fantastic bonus. With a base speed of 40 feet and a boosted to 60 with long strider and blade flourish, the brown bear is both fierce and fast. Another great pick is the dire wolf. Once you've picked up extra attack, the dire wolf becomes a standout option. It excels with keen senses, pack tactics, and with extra attack, two chances to knock enemies prone. With a base speed of 50 feet and boosted to 70 with long strider and blade flourish, the dire wolf outpaces the brown bear and is incredibly agile. Next up, the giant toad. For sheer damage and control, the giant toad is phenomenal. Its bite delivers solid damage, an extra 1d10 poison damage, and the ability to grapple targets. With extra attack, you can even swallow your prey in the same round, making it a versatile and formidable choice. 
Last but not least, my personal favorite and the most thematic for this build is the giant Roctopus. This large-sized land octopus boasts a massive 15-foot reach with its tentacles, which can grapple and restrain targets, giving your party advantage on subsequent attacks. Its ink cloud creates a heavily obscured 20-foot radius around you, and you can dash as a bonus action. Despite its slow 20-foot base speed, Long Strider and Blade Flourish will bring it up to a more respectable 40 feet, making it a truly unique and strategic option. Embrace these forms and let your Wild Shape adventures be both dynamic and thematic. One thing to keep in mind is that Wild Shape limits your access to magical damage outside of spells. To counter this, look for magical items that boost your natural weapon damage. The Insignia of Claws, for instance, is a great option to ensure your attacks retain that magical edge. If you enjoyed this video and are into D&D and gaming guides, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to stay updated on all my channel's latest content. Got any thoughts or suggestions for future videos? Drop them in the comments below. If you're as passionate about gaming as I am, make sure to check out my other videos for more epic guides and adventures. This has been Deadman Fred, and until next time, may RNG be forever in your favor.